Hi everyone, Raphael Harry here, and you're listening to White Label American, a podcast where we hear stories from an immigrant or two, sometimes more. Thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of White Label American. Thank you all for joining us today. And before we begin, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreons, Ben, Keith, Vanessa, Hop, um, Kevin, Martha, Elena, Mark, Daniel, Kennedy, Jeff, Sarah, Verena, Brenda, Jennifer, Sean, and Unnena. Thank you for being Patreons and making this podcast possible and building a community. Uh, for our first-time listeners, along with those who are regulars who at this moment may not be able to sign up for Patreon, we understand. You can still support this podcast via subscribing, sharing with your friends, family, loved ones, giving five stars and a positive review on any platform that you listen to this podcast on. So without much further ado, we jump to today's guests, two fantastic people who I was honored to... Um, get to know thanks to the Blindian project. Um, I hope to get the well, one of the co-founders soon. Well, it's just due to scheduling. We haven't been able to um, fix a date. But um, today is about Janice and Malik, who are st- students, young professionals, content creators with, a, with an awesome YouTube channel. I can't recommend it enough. But um, at the end, we're going to plug all that in and these are two wonderful people who uh I don't think every time I've every time I've been on their channel, I always end up in a good mood. So there was no way I I wasn't gonna reach out to them and say, Hey, you guys wanna come on the podcast because they just have this energy that it's it's refreshing. That's the way I'll say it. It's refreshing to to hear from people like this. And they're also in, in an interracial relationship. But it's a different type of interracial relationship than what we've had on the podcast because it's the first Blindian couple that we've had on this podcast. So welcome to White Label American, Janice and Malik. How y'all doing today? We're good. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. And uh, I hope y'all are doing great today. And uh, so let's jump to the first question. Can you introduce us to where you were born and um, your childhood? What was it like? Um, I will start off with answering that question first. Sure. Um, Honestly, I was born in Karachi, Pakistan back in 96. So this is like way before coming to Canada. I, like, I came to Canada. In oh, oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. I forgot to mention one important part. So you already, <laughs> it, the, the spoiler is already out, but I, still, I should have added that to your intro. So another thing about my guest is that they are, we, 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 these are the first guests we have on the podcast from our neighbors up north. So, you know, well, we, we, have, we have, I have to like give you all proper, you know, respect, like a shout out. You know, we yeah. can't just say, hey, we brought you on the podcast and we don't recognize, you know, that we went across the border to get yeah. Roy, 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 res, you know, the respect has to be given, proper, you know, proper shout out. Yeah. So, sorry about that. So, please, please continue, Malik. Um, I, I like, we're from Toronto, Canada. So, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, basically. And uh, my like my favorite childhood memory is basically going to Canada's Wonderland, honestly, because Canada's Wonderland is based in Toronto. It is the Disney World's uh, version for Americans. It's like we are Canadian version. So like it was mm-hmm. always going there every summer using that little uh, summer pass that we had back in the day it was way cheaper. So. We would just abuse it all the time. Go every single day with my family. <laughs> abuse the water rides. Abuse the, the coasters that they had. That's basically for me, honestly. But how about you, Jan? Yeah, so myself, Janice. I was born and raised here in Toronto, Canada. Um, I've actually lived in the greater Toronto area my entire life. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, my childhood, I would describe it as a pretty good childhood. Um, although there's not... Well, let me mention that my both my parents are born and raised in Uganda. They came here way back when, in around the early 90s. 
So I pretty much settled here in Canada and that's where I grew up. Um, my favorite childhood memory, again, I would probably say Wonderland just because that's something that's <laughs> pretty, um, I guess, nostalgic to for myself as well as the c &E. Anyone that's from the Toronto area, yeah, it's thanks. an annual tradition to go to the c &E, which is the exhibition. It's pretty much just like a big carnival event. Mm. Happens once a year. Okay. Um, what, what time of the what, what um, time of the year? Uh, what season in the year? Yeah, so it actually happens right before back to school time. So the oh, end of okay. August, since the school time here starts in the beginning of September. Yeah. So it's pretty much just an annual event for everyone, all the families to get together right before they go back to school. So I would say that's a favorite childhood memory. Of my and child. we've also made it like a anniversary type of thing for our relationship. Oh. Oh. Every year we would go to CNE, but now since COVID, we can't go. Yeah. But we're we're enjoying it however we can because of COVID. So the abbreviation is CNE. Yes, Canadian National Exhibition. Canadian National yeah. Exhibition. Ah, and you've okay. probably seen videos on YouTube of like F sixteen fighter jets flying over it. Is they they have this whole air show too? So oh, probably... so the, wait, they, I, I thought it was a Wonderland thing, and now you have it. Military air shows because that's yeah, we have everything there. Yeah, it's right around the everything. it's right around the harbor of Toronto, so like downtown Toronto where Lake Ontario oh. is. So they fly the Canadian and American. Yeah, uh, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, if American military appears there too. Mm -hmm. They do. They do oh. show up. So, you, know, you know what's funny? Um, I used to be in the Navy, and I did try out to. Um, be on the the squad the to be part of the crew of the blue angels and part of uh back then i was single and they had told me that oh if you if you get selected it's a process so i worked i worked in logistics supply for it's a different name but it, um for the civilians for the um people listening who are not military for you to understand it's just working in logistics so what uh they would have one of the things they told me, like the breakdowns was that if I get selected to be part of the Blue Angels crew, I'll get to travel to air shows, you know, I'll be the logistics guy handling their jet supplies and all that stuff for the pilots and all the guys. And I was like, oh, so we're traveling um, through the United States, right? You know, and they're like, oh, we, we go to Canada. I was like, to go do what? <laughs> what to do here <laughs> like what are you, what are you gonna do there <laughs> so yeah now that you mentioned CNE, and e i was like okay yeah so okay uh, that's probably what they were talking about that uh would have been coming to canada so if i'd been selected i probably would have been like oh yeah i've been there i i, I know what you're talking about now but <laughs> yeah so I, I just got that flashback now wow so um how old were you malik when when you came to canada I'm going to say maybe like four or five years old. Oh, I have pretty young. In my head, I have, I have the memory of the border agent asking, okay, you're coming to Canada. What are you here for? I'm just like thinking in my head, probably at the age, like start a new life. So, um, <laughs> um, like I did all my like schooling here. I went yeah. to high school, university and all that. So, yeah, I, I like it here. But I still, still wish to go back to Pakistan and visit sometime soon. Yep. So, do you have any memories from Pakistan? Um, you know, your childhood days. Do you remember anything? Uh, some some memories. It's like um, so. There's this big, uh, I guess, like you could say, for the you know how I'm in in the states, like in DC, they have um, like a statue honoring um, the uh, what's his name, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Abraham, they have a statue like that honoring him. And I'm not entirely sure where they put his grave. I'm not sure if that's inside there, but they have this, um, I guess, grave for Qadi Azam of Pakistan. And he was, his name was like Ali Jinnah. He's the founder of Pakistan. And he was, people don't know it, that he's, he was one of the reasons how India formed and Pakistan formed. He was like a close, uh, like ally of Gandhi at the time too. Yeah. So, um, I like going there when I was a kid and I have memories of myself back in the, like the last time I visited Karachi. Oh, I wow. love going there. It was just like a, it was like a point in the city that kind of like overlooked the rest of the city. And it was just beautiful. Look coming and seeing that you're right 
where like the grave of the, the founder of Pakistan is. And that's that's what I cherish. Because wow. like I, I like my history of my country. I'm I'm proud to be Pakistani too. Yeah. Pakistani Canadian, I guess. Yeah, that, that's what you are. Yeah, you have no no not denying that. Um what one one thing that amazes me about Pakistan is it's a huge country and it has beautiful landscapes. Like you know, every country I have on earth is actually is, is, is beautiful. There, I don't think there's any ugly country on earth. But yeah, it has a lot of mountains, like a mountainous region and all that. And man, I, I, every time I've seen photos, I'm like, I just want to go hang around there sometimes. You know, it would just be fun. It just feels like somewhere where I can just go sit down, and just you know, just relax, just sit down, and relax, like that kind of. That that's just what what I feel like from the photos. That's what just comes. I just picture myself in there. Like, I don't know what I'll be doing. I'm not a hiking type of person, funny enough. I'm not the... But I, I just see those mountains. Like, anytime I see mountains or a range, I, I just see myself like, oh, I'm just sitting there. Maybe too much watching of Avatar, The Last Airbender, because it's that, I don't know. But I'm hoping he'll take me there one day once COVID's over. He'll take you me should. back to where he's from. <laughs> you should. That's the goal, honestly. Yeah. Because there's just like... What uh, like some groups have done to defame the name of Pakistan? So mm -hmm. I want to bring her and show her the street food, the culture, and like how the people are really welcome there. They're All right, you 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 my type of man. You you just said one key. The key you said the right thing there. Street food. All right, we can hang out. I like that. You 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 know what it takes when you, when you travel somewhere. If you don't eat the street food, you're disqualified. According to me, I'm like, yeah. yeah well, why why would you go somewhere? You not you don't want to eat what the people eat. But, you know, if you go eat fa at fancy restaurants, what what's the point? So, yeah. but um, Janice, have you have you been to uh, Uganda? So surprisingly, it might sound crazy to some, but I've never been there. No, it's not. It's not crazy. Some people are surprised. I've never been there. Like. I've just been in the Toronto area my whole life. I'm hoping one day I'll get to go back and see where my parents are originally from. But I, I consider, I know where I'm from, but I consider Toronto my home since this is all I've ever known, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. I'll probably go back and explore all of East Africa since I also have family in places like Kenya. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. for that sometime. So, do you, do you know your tribe? And yes, I, I do. <laughs> so my parents actually come from the most eastern part of Uganda. Okay. And they're part of this tribe called the Teso people. Teso. Yeah, T E S O. Okay. So that's where my origins are. Um I'm pretty just like there's not really a big community here in the Toronto area, but I know they're pretty scattered. I know there's a pretty big population of them out in the UK. Um, there's someone also in the U.S. I do have family in the U.S. there, so I'm pretty much just scattered. Also, like in Australia, so that's where I come from. <laughs> yeah, the U.K. It's, it's it's normal to find um, all the former British colonies, people from all the former British colonies there. It's 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 a given. <laughs> we yeah, are, we are always there. <laughs> you can find us in the U.K. It's guaranteed. <laughs> they will always find us there. Like I have cousins everybody like that that's why it's hard for me to like say i'm going to the uk it's just yeah there are too many people who i'm supposed to like let know that hey i'm coming i'm like uh yeah no <laughs> yes. yeah so that's that's beautiful wow so yeah that, that's that's uh fantastic oh uh, um quick question for you malik so i, I know india has um uh, like uh, um, is, is there tribes that, that they do in India or, or like you know, ethnic groups? So the Pakistan, uh, like for what well, from um, how will I put this question? Like from each region that you, or each part of India, they have like you know, like if you're from the the south, the northeast, you know, I've forgotten the exact word I'm looking for for identifying where someone is from. But like in Pakistan, like you know, is there a way of identifying what part of the country some body is from like did you guys go by ethnic groups or tribes or, you know? um i don't know exactly my village of like where i'm from uh, all i know was like the city okay um, where like my family would stay um like with with india it's kind of like a little different they have like a caste system yeah yeah it's kind of very discriminatory so it's, of course uh, it is 
they have it like different but uh even pakistan there's some caste system there but it's not based on the names it's more i guess um colorism you, you've probably mm. seen a video so it's, it's similar to yemen because i'm i'm uh, uh is pakistan similar to the yemeni caste system uh i'm not entirely sure about yemen but like we have like we have different regions and there's a region where i'm from like my family punjab mm -hmm. So basically, when Pakistan and India were together before British India, yeah. they when they separated the country, they basically split Punjab in half. And then there's an Indian Punjab, mm -hmm. and known for a Sikh population, and then you have the Punjab Pakistan, which also has a, a like a small Sikh population. But I feel that's my ethnic group. You can say like Punjabi, oh. Pakistani. My the oldest guest I've had on the podcast who uh, I fondly call Uncle G. He was born in, uh, he, he's a Punjabi. Okay. Yeah, he was b born in pre-colonial India before the, so his, his story includes uh, being in India when the partition happened and his family losing everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's uh, it's all included in that episode. And yeah, he, he lives in New York now. And yeah, very great guy. Fantastic guy. He's a, he's a Sikh. Also, so yeah, so well, when you 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 said that, I was like, yep, yeah, that's uh, you just you just brought Uncle G to mind. So you see, you know, it's it's a small world at the end of the day. Maps are big, but at the end of the day, it's a small world. But yeah, so let's come down to Toronto. Um, one fun question. Um, so I'm an I'm 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 a transplant to New York, you know. Cause I, I wasn't born here, I wasn't raised here. I haven't lived in New York for up to ten years, but I'm I'm I consider myself a New Yorker because of certain things. I sped the process up, and now I'm I'm a local. I'm a local. I don't, officially, I'm not, but I made myself a local. But yeah. if I were to come to Toronto now, what qualifies me to be a local in Toronto? So, one thing as a New Yorker, you'll you'll probably see is when you visit Toronto, you're gonna be like, bam. Did I just walk into New York? Because like it's it, Toronto was when they first established a city like history, yeah. they wanted the architecture to be based off Brooklyn. Ah, so, yeah. so I, I live in Brooklyn. So to Toronto, you'll be like, okay, this, the architectures are similar, the streets are similar. Even when they film movies in Toronto, Canada is a big movie uh, yeah. Like industry. Yeah. When they film movies in Toronto, they make it look like New York City, and it's like, all right. Why don't you just put Toronto instead? instead? Well, a lot of uh, movies that are supposed to be, that claim to be, uh, like, like when they want to film scenes that are supposed to be in the United States, they go to Canada and film it because it's mm -hmm. cheaper to do that. Yeah. So they exactly. film it there and then tell you, oh, this is um, New York or, you know, Chicago, and then they film it over in Canada. And then it's if you watch at the end of the movie, in the end credits, then you see, we'd like to thank the Canadian board of this and this city, and you're like, wait, why? Why are they thanking any place in the United States? It's only Canada that's thanking. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been pretty big here, the movie industry, especially um during COVID. Yeah. We've had a lot of um movies being filmed down here. Even recently, there was a Kevin Hart movie oh. uh, filmed okay. here in the Toronto area, so that was pretty big. Oh wow! And a lot of people came out to see him. Like it was. Yeah, like we have this transit system in Ontario called Go, and basically filmed it along those lines. It changed the whole the, the whole train station. It changed it to fit the movie's uh, story. Yeah. But like favorite spot, as in to answer the question, there's there's numerous spots in Toronto. But I'll say for both of us, it'll be like Yorkdale Mall, which is like pretty much the 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 Fuji Mall in Toronto, or so, <laughs> but it's mainly because once they opened the first cheesecake factory in all of Canada, we we just went there like numerous times because that's that's our spot. But we also like just being that mall. Okay. It's 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 nice to walk through also, wow. and it connects like our, our, like to our universities too. So it's kind of yeah, that's easy the to spot. Get there. <laughs> nice, nice. So have you guys? Has any of you guys been to New York? Yep. <laughs> I've been through New York, not actually been around the city and experienced the city, just through the airport and then on my way out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to ask how, how did you feel in comparison to Toronto? Like, you know, like, did, did, 
because I think Malik will be able to answer this question. So, taking the, uh, did you take the train in in New York? Did you take the, use the public transportation? So when I went was back in '09, and I I remember how it was mostly my dad just driving and using our van through okay. the city, and now I've became a driver. And one thing I will tell you is Toronto drivers are not any better in driving because our insurance rates are pretty high here. Oh, okay. Like New York. But versus New York City drivers, yeah. I'm just going to say Toronto's better. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't, if I were to drive to New York City, I cannot deal with those taxis. I'm sorry, but those taxi drivers are crazy in New York City. What's up with them? Like, hey, if, look, want to, like, look, drive look, them, look. <laughs> all you got to do is go drive in the Middle East. Then you you you'll be able to drive in New York. You you won't be scared of driving in New York. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> if you've driven in some places overseas, then you'll be ready to drive in New York. You'll be like, okay, I can do this. But yeah, it, it's it's uh it's a little bit special driving in New York. I don't drive nowadays, uh, but anytime I have to drive, I'm like, it, it just it, you blend. It, all you gotta do is take a deep breath. Yeah, suck. So, Suck some of that New York air in. Take it in. You do that, you're good. Because now you've acclimatized. That's how you acclimatize. It's, the air is not, it's not really that um, healthy. i put it that way. But now you've become one with New York. New York has become one with you. <laughs> okay. Then you get on the road. Ain't nobody can... Those drivers, when they talk trash to you, you talk trash back. And black. <sighs> I'm here. They'll block we'll take you. a picture of there someday. <laughs> that would be fun ah, all right so yeah let's let's move on so um you guys both come from different religious background um well before i jump to the religion let, let's officially talk about how you guys met i i, I know the story because i've i've spied a little but my audience they're not aware so would, would you get, like guys like to introduce us to how you both met yeah, so we actually met about four years ago. Uh, we met in 2017 at a place called Wet and Wild, which is a water park here in the greater Toronto area. It's not actually in Toronto, but it's called Wet and Wild Toronto. Oh, so okay. um, we were both working there. I was working just uh, at like, I would say like the front desk area, handing out tickets, just doing that, the regular duties. And he was a security guard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what we were doing before and i'm not exactly sure we kind of just started no talking. okay there's a whole explain. story <laughs> okay yeah. so basically i was the security guard and there was this thing at this park uh the managers were kind of a-holes to people they wouldn't allow you know how the water parks are they want you to buy their stuff yeah. don't bring yeah. anything inside so obviously people sneak it in right mm. so we had to like check people at the door okay and check through their things and i would kind of like let things pass because obviously if there's a kid or something that's, that's fine like oreo box is okay but then uh what happened is most of the time we had to confiscate the food because people wouldn't bother to go back to the cars and drop the food off yeah. so they're like okay just confiscate it so at the end of the day we were actually supposed to i guess toss the food there was no rules written in so i was like Okay, guys, end of our shift, who wants free snacks? So I just basically <laughs> told within our security group, but then they started telling other people, and then it just kind of went through the park who we trusted. Yeah. But obviously, I had told her at the time, yeah. and we were just chatting, like, as friendly. And then she wanted her Pringles, and I think it was, like, original Pringles. Yeah, I, I wanted some chips. I, I was keeping my eye on them, and I told him, can you just save me them? <laughs> For, for my ride home. I just want to snap. <laughs> yes. But what happened is that she didn't come first come first serve. And mm -hmm. I kind of may have forgotten about those Pringles. And when we had whatever chips I was left, and, we just, and when she came with her friends, it was like, okay, this is all we got. Mm -hmm. So what, what would you like? It's for free. You can take it. And she's like, okay, I'll take this. But you, you, I had told you about my Pringles. You better have kept those Pringles. I'm like, okay, next time. And then after that, we just had like, uh, a few run-ins, and then uh, uh, I saw her at the park, and I just had to get her number at the time. So I was like, "Yep, yeah. not regretting it." So <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how we met. <laughs> Over Pringles. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, Pring Pringles should sponsor you guys. They should sponsor your your channel. I mean, 
Look at that. You're giving them good, um, giving them good, uh, a good shout out there. So they 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 they, they should at least throw some money your way, and that, that's that's the least they can do. And I appreciate you guys. You know. Thank you. Um, yeah, you reminded me of um, early in my. Um, I, th I think I was less than I was just a few months in the navy, and one of the guys in the barracks, uh, they were in charge of taking care of the barracks, and we both went to boot camp together. And funny enough, he was a he, he's a racist. Not was he's a racist. I don't think he's changed. But you know, I, I was straight from I was fresh off the boat. Didn't really know a lot of stuff, but I was the cool black guy in his. <laughs> among his friends so um when they did inspections he, they used to like when we went to work part of their job was to go through all the rooms make, make sure there was no contraband um in your fridge and you'll be amazed by how people left contraband in the open and included amongst contraband was if you were under the age of 21 because united states under the age of 21 you're not supposed to have alcohol so they have the list of um, everybody, they have your information, then your name, your your sex, and all that. So they know all the, on that twenty one. So they always go to those rooms. They'll be targeting those rooms. And if you have alcohol in 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 that room, and you have a roommate who's younger than twenty one, you're supposed to put a label with your name on it on the alcohol, so that it shows that the person older than twenty one has the alcohol. But if you don't have a label on it, then the alcohol can be confiscated. So this racist boy will that's his main job. He just goes to all the rooms, looks for the alcohol, and then <laughs> takes all the alcohol that don't have any label on them from the rooms that um have that are for the twenty ones and below, uh under twenty ones. And at the end of work, you know, when when I, when I get back, he gives me a call like, Hey man, you wanna come get some of the stuff that we got? Because uh the instruction is throw it away. <laughs> just pour it away. And they're like, uh, it's booze, good booze. We're not going to pour it away. So that's how I was getting free booze every day. I just show up and, yeah, I was just getting the hookup. And, yeah, it would take me a, a little bit to figure out, oh, this guy's racist, but that's a different <laughs> conversation. But I was just getting booze like that. I was like, wait, do you guys do any other job other than <laughs> just going to rooms looking for uh, contraband? And that's the only contraband you guys really focus on was just booze. Because uh, I, I don't know if you guys focus on any other thing. Oh, yeah, we, we, we do, we do. But it's actually the booze we're looking for because that's that's the one we really enjoy. So <laughs> that's where all their focus was on, looking for yeah. the alcohol. But, uh, yeah. But uh, it, it's beautiful that you guys um, met through um, your former place of work because I, I assume you guys no longer there. And uh, But what what gave you the... Because I, you didn't sound like from day one you were like, oh, I'm just going to get Johnny's number. Uh, what, 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 when did you have that, you know, inspiration or the, the epiphany? Like, today is the day I have to take that step. Did something happen? Did you get that shining light? Or did someone speak to you and say, hey, Janice likes you? Or Janice wants to talk to you? Or some, did something happen? Or did someone give you the code or what? Some, some, there was like two or three things that happened. I'm, I'm going to share it right now. Um, one was that she actually came in one day um, not working, and she was in a very, very nice room. And I was just like, oh, my God. And I, was, I was at work. And then my coworker, uh, her name was Roman, and she was like, why do you, why are you staring at her? I'm like, oh, oh, oh sorry. I'm like, not supposed to stare at her. And she's like, if you if you're gonna keep staring and go get her number, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, but I already kind of knew her at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just more like a friendly, you know, see you at work and you know, bye and stuff like that. But then I was just more, uh, like I got her number. So, but it was it was not only that. It was more like at the time I was, I was I think I was 21 and I was more of like the shy, nervous type of kid. Um, I was never like had experience with any woman, I guess, or any of that stuff. But a little voice kind of told me in my head, and it was more like, like I, I was walking towards a direction, and that voice told me like, like, hey, uh, Malik, you gotta man up, you gotta take charge, go get a number. You've never done anything like this, so go do it. 
And if it doesn't work out, so whatever, right? Yeah. She tried and it worked. So it was good. So I was kind of happy there. All right. So it's one thing when we tell the story, well, by we, I mean men, when we tell the story, but when women tell the story, it's uh, a little bit different. Because like when you ask my partner about how we met and all that, I mean, it's still as, it's as awesome as the way I tell it. But she always adds an extra um, tea spilling to, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, that's not really important, but she likes to throw that in there. So, Janice, what about you? You know, when, when, when Malik was walking up to you, what was that moment like? So, to be honest, I didn't really think anything much of it. So, yeah. that's that same day that he's talking about, I went to the park with my niece. So, I was pretty much just going on the rides with her. And I saw him looking at me. He came up to me, started talking to me. But, like, I didn't think anything much of it. I'm not the person to know that someone is interested. I just kind of brush it off and I'm just on my way. So, um, yeah, pretty much he was just texting me, just asking me where I was. And then I told him, like, I'm going on the ride. So, I don't know. It's just we just started talking in a, in a friend manner. And then things kind of just progressed from there. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, Malik, you passed. You passed. Normally, you know, sometimes dudes we like to like make it sound a little bit extra. Like you know, I I, I had it under control. Everything was all good. And then the missus is like, mm, "Excuse me." And then you're like, "Uh, yeah, I forgot that part." <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's the one that always remembers the details, not me. Yeah, <laughs> Malik does sound like. A very detailed guy. A very, he's, yeah. he's down to the yeah. details. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So, before I jump into the next question, uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hi, everyone. Your host Rafael Harry here. I can't believe we have gone past our one year anniversary of doing white label american i've had the privilege of speaking with some amazing people sharing their modern day immigrant stories and you've allowed this nigerian immigrant to share parts of his immigrant journey through this podcast also one of my goals of this podcast is breaking down artificial walls that keep people from getting to understand each other. Based on your wonderful feedback over the last year, I think we have done a decent job in breaking down some of those walls. We would like to continue and expand on this mission, but we need your help. I've had an amazing time creating and producing episodes for this show largely on my own. We have a lot of ideas for new and exciting content to expand upon the mission, but we need direct support from you, our listener, which is why we have created a White Label American Patreon page where you can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining contributor where you can get access to exclusive content, help me interview upcoming guests by submitting questions, and even have the chance to sit down with me for a one-on-one -on -one conversation either virtually or in studio so if this podcast means something to you and if you really love this show think about becoming a sustaining contributor and donating by going to patreon.com slash white label american pod Thanks for listening and for the privilege of your company. We're continuing from where we stopped and we're going to go to something that's uh, very important for people who are from different backgrounds, people who are in, um, in every relationship and not everybody can handle this, but you guys have a unique, a uniqueness to yourself in that you're, you're both from different religions and you're able to make it work for yourselves and i'd seen something like this in nigeria where which was the first time i'd ever seen couples of different religions 
um, come together, you know, we are dating, some got married and you know, all that. But there were challenges, serious challenges. Um, I was, I'm aware of couples that um, one family, one of their families disowned them because it's like, nope, you got to marry the same person from your religion. It's not about love. It's about sticking to the same God or the same religion. And, um, but you guys seem to have an understanding of how you want to make it work, what defines both of you. So do you mind sharing how you guys navigated that field? Um, actually to your, to what you said, right? Like you said that in like, it's not based on love. It's more because of like, I guess, status or marrying within the religion. And what's the point of marrying then if you're not going to love the person? Like, I honestly don't get the point of that. You're going to be miserable your entire life. And that's the thing that some people just, I guess, like, that more of the elders don't understand. Like, it's, you, this is why divorce rates are, like, pretty high nowadays. And because people don't love each other properly. And if you don't, even, like, back home, if you don't love the other partner that you're going to marry, you're just going to be miserable your entire life. Your children are going to be miserable, too, then if you end up having them. But yeah, religion, it's never been an issue for us. When we were first started dating, we were obviously aware of each other's religions. I think it's just because mainly we grew up in such a multicultural environment that we were already exposed to the religions. So nothing was a big shock to it, to either of us. And even like during the era that my parents grew up in, my parents grew up in the era um, in Uganda during Idi Amin and he was um, oh, yeah. a, a Muslim. And he's actually a dictator. So mm -hmm. I was already aware of the, the background. So nothing was a complete shock. And we're just really just um, understanding of each other's faiths. And we believe in one God at the end of the day. So that's never been an issue for us. Yeah, uh, I th think both of what you said is important. And um, it's also good for people to know themselves uh, and uh, know yourself first before taking that leap. Um, I'm not religious. I don't believe I need a religion to be who I need to be, which is one reason why I don't practice any religion. Uh, but with that being said, I could have, I could date someone with a religion, but we have to come to the understanding that, you know, I, I don't need to toe your line it's not a must, you know, I, I, but I don't define you. You don't, you know, I, we, I had to love who I am first because even when I was religious, I was very hateful. I was, a, I was Islamophobic. I was homophobic. I was a whole, a whole lot of package anti-black. Yes, black people can be anti-black too. And I came with all those packages and I'm still working on um, unwiring a whole bunch of them. And which is one reason why I have this podcast. And when I start looking back at a whole bunch of marriages that I, 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 I was exposed to and seeing all of the, the divorces that um, I'm aware of, it's not that the people, there was never any love. There was never any love. It was, you know, someone who's, uh, there's this thing we, we, we used to have and just like as soon as the lady gets above the age of 26 and you can't you, you you're not married you, you know it's like the, the timer has kicked off you come home your, your mom sees you uh, uh, talking to any man it's like why are you talking to is, is that the man you want to get married to but why and it's like the pressure begins your mate has gone has three kids and you, you're not married and so you start building the pressure you start putting the pressure on the woman start throwing pressure 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 and for, for men, it's a little bit relaxed because, you know, men, it's patriarchy, you know, how the system works. We, we, we got time. We got time. We can be even up to 35. But they, they still throw it in different ways because it got to a stage. My family officially didn't, um, don't accept gay people. But it got to a stage where they were like, um, are, you okay? are you gay? If you're gay, well, okay. Just but bring somebody that you're going to get married to. That's <laughs> when, when I got to like, uh, 32 Still no, we're not hearing about marriage from you. Okay, if he's a man, you're gonna bring 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 a man who we'll accept that. Just just get married. <laughs> they, they, they did that with me, and uh, but I had to say it was gonna be on my terms. I had to find me. I had to love me. If I didn't love myself, why am I gonna love someone else? And people don't have that conversation 
we don't, you know, because it's all about if I love God, then somehow God will send somebody and then even if the person is totally a monster, the person is, you know, but it's like, oh, but God can change the person. And I don't know, I don't I don't know how many of my aunts said that God will change the person. That man started beating the hell out of them. There was this, there were so many monsters. And I'm like, but how did what what is this? How's this love? It didn't make sense. But I'm a kid. Then looking at it, I'm like, how is this making sense? It didn't make sense. And I'm just confused. And when you ask questions, shut up. That's the yeah. that's you what know, you're told. You know? Just bring that up. Um, yeah, you know, we came from a background, both of us, where we do have religious, like quote unquote, very strict religious people. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say more so my grandparents, my parents are not like that themselves. So we're pretty much progressive. Like <laughs> Yeah. How about you? <laughs> my family is my family. Um, there's like some some members of my family that aren't progressive. Some are traditional. Yeah. But they're more like I guess you can say progressive, conservative. Like in Canada, we have a different type of conservative party. Oh yeah. But they're um, they're still laid back in their views, and some of them still have some colorist uh, bias. So it's 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 still there to work on and. We, we feel like we can still work on that and have them accept us. That's good. That's important. And I hope people listening will take that into um, recognition that it's not something that, you know, people just jump into blindly. Because this brings me to the next question, which is a little bit funny, but um, I, I know, Malik, you brought this up in one of your videos about people always asking you to hook them up with a Ugandan partner uh, for themselves. And I wonder, Janice, do, do, you, do you ever get, do, do people ask you to hook them up with a Pakistani? Not necessarily a Pakistani, but just, I would just say a man. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they're white, black, brown, anything, but um, I don't, I don't get that really that much. I only remember this one instance of one of my friends she was looking for someone. So then I asked him if any of his friends are available, but that, that just didn't go through. So Yeah, I think like... No, no, um, that, that, that's different from people specifically ask, like as soon as they know that, oh, you're dating, you have, you're in, in an interracial relationship and like, oh, this person is Pakistani, Canadian. I want the same thing too. I want one. Where do you get one? Where, where, you get, where you get him from? Oh, I want one like that too. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not like you go to the shopping a supermarket and just <laughs> pick one from the counter like you know it's, it's not an object you know? yeah <laughs> exactly especially other black women there's there's beautiful black women out there too but they're not objects they're, they're human beings themselves you, you gotta like i've had i've had like friends um i guess after a fact um they probably they found her very beautiful most likely too because i find it beautiful every <laughs> single day so they probably were like, okay, so if you're, if Malik was able to find a beautiful woman, then you must have other beautiful women down the line. I'm like, what is this, like an assembly plant or something? Like, <laughs> am I just, like, you got to put yourself out there. That, that's just how you're going to find the one, right? You got to yeah. put yourself out there. Delete your dating apps that you got on your phone because that's not going to help. Because you, you got to actually put yourself out there and be confident and they'll come to you. Well, I have a different take on the dating app because that's how I got my partner. Oh, it it, it works for me. Sorry, but no, 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 no. He's not. He's not wrong. It, it it works in every different different ways. There are different ways to to get there. So, yeah. but I I I, pro, I try to provide all as many options as possible. But Malik is not wrong. You got to put yourself out there, and the dating app is one way. But I tell people like, cause I got the same thing. My, my, my partner, she's from Germany. She's not American. Okay. And I got people asking me like, as soon as they, they found out, oh, you didn't, a, you, 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 you were a German. And then we, we now have a daughter. Whoa, whoa, whoa man. I, I, oh man, she's this, she's that. Wow. She's so cool. Man, you got, uh, she, you got, you got any, you, you know, of any German, any single German lady, like, uh, you know, I, I want, I like to date a German too. I'm like, uh, Germany got how uh, many mean billions of people there. Yeah. My friend was dating a German lady around the same time. She turned out to be racist. <laughs> so that don't mean every German woman is racist. But mm-hmm. hey, you got to know. You know yourself. You know what you want. You know what defines you. You know what your standards are. So if you're just going to look at who I'm dating and say, oh, that who Raph is dating is who I'm going to go with. I'm like, ah, 
I don't know if that will work for you because you don't know who I am. You don't know what I've chosen to uh, define myself by. I'm as, I try to be as transparent as possible with my partner because I, you know, now that we have a daughter, I try to be as, my relationship with my daughter is transparency because my parents weren't transparent with me. So I try to offer her my daughter that, even though she's 2.5 now and being my boss in the house, but you know, I, I try to offer her that and that's how I define my relationship. But I tried, when I met my partner, it was the same thing. I told her, like, hey, this is me. This is what I come with. This is my baggage. And, hey, I'm not, when I say I'm not like other guys, that's what I mean. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but this is what I mean. And I don't hide it. But what, when I say, you know, there are people who I've met who, in their way of dating, is like, when they say, what makes you happy? When they're talking to their partner, be it a man or woman, what makes you happy is they want to know your fantasy. They want to know. They want to know, like, are you ready for that conversation? But now if some people like, uh, I want a woman or a man who's going to treat me like a king. But do you want to treat that person like a queen? Oh, hell no. Hell, I'm the only one who's going to be serviced. And I'm like, yeah, my partner is not that type because I'm not attracted to those type of people, you know? So yeah, definitely. And you know what? When we first started dating, like, it wasn't even about just, oh, he's Pakistani, I'm Ugandan. Because yeah. I didn't really just, I just, I saw, obviously, he was a brown person. He saw I was black, but... Mm-hmm. I didn't care. I didn't pay too much of it. And this is our first relationship. And this just so happens to be interracial too. So it, it hasn't been like, it's not something that we like sought out. Like, okay, I'm going to go date a Pakistani man. Yeah. Like I never had that ever in my head growing up. Cause I just, I don't know. I just I never guess had. it's different for me, honestly. Yeah. Cause like, um, like my previous dating partners were all like dark skinned women. So I think like I've just built a preference from like this dark skinned woman, I guess. I, like I kind of highlighted that in my video. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Viewers can see our videos and see what my preference is about. But obviously, like when I went out, I didn't go looking, looking for a exact black woman. It just happened, happened, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you, you know, you, you learn from every relationship and, you use that to define yourself and you recognize certain things and you improve on that. But I think there are too many people who just look at, you know, especially like the way we look at celebrities and say, oh, I want, I want this type of relation. This, this is gold. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, if, those, if that celebrity tells you the truth, <laughs> I don't know if you really go make that the gold. You only look at the, the beautiful pictures and say goals. But yeah. Um, yeah, there are people who they don't accept any cheating. But when my in the uh in 2000 and i think it was 2002 i was in benin city back in nigeria and that was the first time i met a nigerian couple that were open about uh that said anything about being in an open relationship they were married and the wife was talking about being in an open relationship and everybody was like wow wow this is wow but now looking back i know why it felt appeasing because the woman said she's okay with her husband. She gives her husband a hall pass to go have fun. He can go have fun. There was nothing that she said about herself going to have fun. She's not allowed to go out. Have, that's, I noticed, now, I, I, when I play back, I was like, she never said anything about herself going to have fun. But the man is allowed to. He's like, oh, but he takes permission. He lets her know that, hey, I'm going to... I'm, I'm not going to come home. Can I, can I stay away from you know, coming home? And I was like, that's some... Uh, transparency in their relationship. I'm I'm impressed. This is wow. And we're like goals, goals. And then later I'm with the boys, and so, you know, and this quite we were talking about something like that. And then I'm like, wait. So what if the woman wants to have a night out? You know, she says, hey, I've I've seen a man that I would like to spend the night with. Oh, oh, oh why? You, what the hell? I will kill that woman. I will throw her out. I will this and that. Now, oh, but. Well, we are okay with the woman saying we should. So, is that not? I thought it's equal partnership, and you know. So the, now the conversation just changed all of a sudden. But then I was like, but that don't make sense. If I because I'm if I'm in a real relationship, I want to be. I see my partner as my equal. So if I'm going to be in certain lifestyle like that, then you should enjoy too. It's not going to be about me because I'm the only one enjoying. And that's how I started defining myself. Okay, what will I be okay with? If I'm okay with this, and you're not okay with it then it's not going to work. And I've started, so every time I'm, I'm having conversations and when it comes to relationship, um, when it comes to relationships, there are guys who are like, man, you're weird. 
you're weird for an African. You're weird for this. So I'm like, uh, aren't we doing, we, we, we're having fun, right? We, we all do the same thing. We do it in the shadows. Is it better to be doing it in the shadows or have a partner that you can do it with in the open and live your life, be peaceful? And they're like, oh, why would I marry a woman like that? I said, dude. <laughs> But people don't have those conversations. No, and I, I tell them, like, you have the conversation because if you want a woman who, you, uh, and I don't mean all relationships are heterosexual, by the way, but if you have a relationship and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm only going to be with a woman who's this and that, and then you now, that's how it starts, where you start sneaking out of the house. Like, uh, hey, honey, I'm, I'm going to Bible study and then you go, oh, I'm working late from work. And then, yeah, no, I'm like, I, that, that wasn't for me because I couldn't do that. So, that that's how <laughs> I always get in trouble with certain people because they're like, man, why why you why you want woman to? I'm saying I want woman to have fun. I can't be in a relationship and woman can't have fun. And you know, doesn't mean I'm in an open relationship. No, that does not mean that. But that's the type of person I was. Like uh, I am that I had to put everything on the table and say, what are you satisfied with? What are you okay with? Let's go. If we're gonna go in a relationship, then that's how it was gonna be. And I've met different people from all over the world, immigrants, everybody, and they all have, there's nobody who does not have fantasies. Nobody. We're pretty, like, uh, laid-back people. We're mm-hmm. pretty much homebodies. So, like, in terms of that... Um, no, I, I, I love you guys for that. I'm not saying you guys, you guys, because uh, you guys, you know, in your channel, you guys tackle a whole lot of stuff like that. I'm, I'm giving this to the general uh, yeah. public and... I'm just telling because you know people listen to podcasts. They they know I talk about stuff like this. But I'm like, yeah, this is something that we shouldn't hide from. We should embrace it more. And it's part of you know when we have conversations about relationships, you know, instead of just focusing on only just you know goals and like celebrity, like nah, celebrities, celebrities are celebrities. They are their own people. But their job is enough to come do it for us. We we still gotta do it for ourselves. So, um, moving on, I got this question. It's a fun question now. Um, you you have a Pakistani background, Malik, and you have um, Ugandan roots, Janus. When it comes to food, who has tried food from each per- uh, the other person's background? And which which one is your favorite? I would say Pakistani, just because where I live, mm-hmm. there's so many South Asians. So automatically, if we're going out to eat, we're just we're just gonna go get either Pakistani or Indian food. <laughs> and to be honest, we love it. Biryani, butter chicken, that's our probably one of our go to meals. <laughs> that's her go to oh. meal. What did you talk about? <laughs> I was about to ask. Like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> like every time I come over, she's just like, babes. I'm hungry. I'm like, okay, we'll cook some food. And then we we'll may we may actually cook some food at home or then I'll be like, oh, let's go get something. And then it's probably like some things like I'm thinking maybe let's go to Cheesecake Factory, let's go to Chick-fil-A or something, or maybe something bad, like not really healthy, but she, she'll be like, babes, uh, let's go eat some butter chicken. Let's eat some chicken biryani. Like she, she's, she's really into like my food, and that's what I'm kind of like. I'm happy about it. Like uh, that, that, that's what makes me happy. Just like I don't have to explain these things to her. Yeah. She already knew about these things way before I even met her, and it was mainly due to like the culture of this, uh, like the greater, like the like the town she lives in, mm-hmm. and also because of her own culture, Uganda, right? Because they mm-hmm. have like brown food that's already ingrained in East African food. Yeah, well, it's so, literally all over Africa, I would say, because, uh, yeah, even when I, after moving to America, it was, um, trying Indian food wasn't a problem for me. So, one, like even when I was doing my internship, one day I was walking around Midtown, and I saw, I think, I, I, yeah, it was a Bangladeshi place. Uh, it was a buffet. And I was just like, oh, nice. They have a deal. I walked in there. I was the only black guy in there. And I was like, hey, you, got, you got food, right? <laughs> I sat down there and I ate. But I also lived in the Middle East. Too. I lived in Bahrain for some time, too. So I got to eat a lot of um, South Asian food because a lot of the workers, they are South Asian. So, but it, it's not difficult. Like you see, the Nigerians, Cameroonians, we we are we're all eating um, South Asian food over there. It's 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 a lot closer to our food because there's plenty of rice in it. So, 
The one, the one we see the rice, it's like, oh, it's easy to just draw us in there. You know, the biryani is another, another form of jollof. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then in Uganda, we have um, palau, which is, it's basically the same thing, but the, the spices are pretty much reduced. Mm. Yeah, Pakistan also has something called palau too. It's like yeah. literally the exact same thing. Yeah, it's I was about to say, that, that name sounded familiar. Huh. White rice and mutton, it's like green peas, um, basically. What is it? Goats? Yeah, goats. <laughs> huh. Maybe it, the, I think it, it uh, maybe I've had the Pakistani one because like Palau sounds like something I've had somewhere or yeah or I've seen it. I'm not a fan, a fan of Palau. It's just it's plain to me, honestly. Yeah, like, they he, make it plain. Like it's why? Like you need the chicken biryani. You need the spices. Like, yeah, br- the- biryani. I, I I don't. I've had so many biryani. I can't even tell which one is which. I can't tell the difference anymore because like I've. I the first time I entered the Moroccan place, there was biryani there. So I was like, I thought this was Indian. Was like, Moroccan, I'm like, okay, well. And then there was, uh, I've had Indian, I've had it at Bangladesh, I've had it at um, the Pakistanis. And I'm like, who, who, so who, who, who's the original owner of biryani? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it has to be Pakistan. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be. Because we, okay, we're, we're, we'll, we'll just say British India. Because yeah. we can't say <laughs> Pakistan or India. Yeah. It was just whole. Okay. And obviously, the other countries, like you mentioned, Morocco and Bangladesh, they have their probably their own versions of yeah. biryani. Because obviously, they put different spices. And I, and I know Afghan biryani is way different. Oh, yes, like, that's true. Afghan, Afghan too, had theirs. That's an, um, um, Iran. Because I, I also had it at an Iranian place too. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. So, yeah, but good good thing you, you good thing you said British India because uh, I I don't want people like heating up the podcast. Hey, 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 what about what about us? It's, I'm like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm go 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 to Malik's go to Malik's um, profile, go to Malik's channel and complain there. <laughs> I, I have tried once. I tried Syrian biryani. Oh wow! Was, it was maybe plow or biryani, but it was a huge platter, and they had like. It was it was it was set up for maybe to feed like ten people, but it was five of us, and it it had raisins in it. Oh, ever okay, that, that's <laughs> real bougie yeah. now. That's real bougie. <laughs> ah. yes. Wow, wow, that's uh... okay. So, what other Ugandan foods do you know of? Because I don't yeah. I don't think I know of any other Ugandan meals. Well, we have um, ugali. Well, it's more Kenyan, but that's... Yeah, that sounds familiar, too. That we eat, like, in my household, ugali. And then we have um, sukuma wiki, which is, I guess, for the Americans, collards. Collard greens. Oh, okay. (laughs) So we have that. Um, We also have um, this thing called matoke, which is basically just... um, It's bananas, green bananas. Um, We pretty much Just green bananas? Yeah, but um, plantains, right? No, no, no. It's it's a just it's a type of banana. Okay. And well, what what do you do with the bananas? We just you kind of I don't know you kind of just boil them and just eat it like that. Oh, okay. That's not. Uh, yeah, we also that, 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 that's we we do that we we do that with unripe plantains and uh, Cameroonians are very popular with unripe plantains too. Yeah, and like then we of course we have um chapati chapati and then samosas well they call sambusa and surprisingly growing up i didn't know there was a difference in the the pronunciations because where i live there's a lot of south asians so i was calling it um so i was calling it sambusa because my mom calls it sambusa yeah because in east africa that's what they call it and then i say sambusa at school to find out that it's samosa so but i don't know it, it's it's it's, so interesting. Wait, it's samosa or sambusa it's sambusa in like East Africa. Oh, okay. And then for South Asians, it's samosa. All right, now, now, now you, you you're teaching me something now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I, I so when I need to switch, I know. Okay, sambusa, sambusa. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, 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 all right. I, I know how to score. I know how to score some cred now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, so thanks for that. We have a lot of we have a lot of similarities. So that that's what I enjoy. Like. We're able to just bring both cultures, the food together, and just enjoy it. I haven't really tried her food that much. Like, Why? Not not so often, like as much as she has tried ours. But like, it's 
like we have one video where we tried out some uh tanzanian fast food and it's like a restaurant in eastern toronto it's called oh Philippe. nice and we didn't really like it as no much. That, that one wasn't good <laughs> <laughs> it's like they had something called ugali fries and apparently Whoa. her mother heard about it she's just laughing she's like you can't do that you can't do that to ugali <laughs> like i i guess like they made it into like these fries like wedges maybe yeah Really yeah, tasty. basically, you just think of fufu being deep fried. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 that doesn't sound right. <laughs> 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 so that was strange. Ah, uh, well, um, yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's one thing. I, I, I get it with the uh, trying to westernize certain foods, but uh, it's our. It's our food. Just package it. Make, make, just make the place presentable. People will come. You know, play nice music. African music is in, is hot right now. People will come. Yeah, yeah. Just um, let, learn how to do the TikToks and all that stuff. People will come there and advertise yourself. That's it. That's all you need to do. I don't. I don't think you need to go over do it with the gully fries and all that. Yeah, ah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, so not not um uh, not I've mentioned um music um mm-hmm. I don't think I, I know of any I, I'm I, I'm I'm aware of Indian um hip hop uh artists well I can't recall anyone but pretty sure I have uh, at least two on my Spotify playlist but what about Pakistan I don't think I have any Pakistani so do you have um, um are you familiar with Pakistani artists um i'm not i'm not really bad into yeah. the deep roots but there are some names that are even if they're in the diaspora that's fine uh so like in pakistan they have even india has their own version it's called it's it's based off like uh, coca uh, coca-cola and they're basically producing this type of music okay and uh they have it called coke studio pakistan and then they have coke studio india but coke studio pakistan is the one that gets their highlights their music is different it's is tribal it embraces the culture of pakistan because mm. pakistan has some uh like uh tribes more of like in the mountainous yeah. area which don't identify with i guess you can say the everyday mm. pakistani you probably think they're afghan or maybe mongolian or some something different yeah but, um um the names that i know of is uh, like atif aslam he's a he's a young artist but he's very big in pakistan to a point where his songs are used in Indian Bollywood movies. Oh wow, that's huge! Very big. That's very huge. Big. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a that's a big crossover right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about any Ugandan well, artists. <laughs> I don't know of really Ugandan artists because, like I said, like I I don't know. I'm just surrounded by so many different cultures, other africans whether that's like west africans and then also a lot of caribbean influences of course here in the toronto area yeah but we share a, sim- a similar interest in music when i met him he was already into afro beats so yeah. <laughs> but oh, he okay. more afro beat songs than me no, <laughs> yes, you what are you talking about he actually knows a lot and um of course just a lot of like hip-hop music that's trending yeah. nowadays drake Drake from Toronto. Wait, 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 we can't count Drake right now. But I mean, if Drake oh, gives me, if yeah, if if, if, if he gives me a shout out, I I accept it obviously. But um, well, well yeah. for the for the sake of you know going with the theme of Pakistan and Uganda, you know we we will have to pick artists from you know outside of Toronto for now. But you know Drake, obviously, you know, I, that that's like cheating. If we go, if we go with Drake, okay, yeah. you know, that's cheating. It's, it's not fair. That's not fair. That's like that's like you're taking an exam and you know the answers are right there. You're like, oh, yep, yep, yeah, that's not fair. You know. So I was gonna ask since Janice just said um, Malik already knew Afro beats. I don't call it Afro beats, but it's there's something about it why I don't call it Afro beats. But I, um, I, for today I'll call it Afro beats. So. Uh, who 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 are your your favorite artists from that genre? I think you, just, you know, I, I actually don't know. I just listen, <laughs> I listen to anybody. I don't really. Oh, okay. you want to say the, you, you know the title of the song? I can tell you the artist. If you, if you African know. Queen. Oh, African <laughs> Queen. <laughs> I told him about that. That's an old song. That's not even considered yeah. Afro beat. <laughs> no, that, that's a song right there. Okay, but like, are um, you old school, I'll man? Be, 
I'll say I'll say one artist group is uh, uh they're not singers but they're kids. Matoto group or something? Matoto kids? Wahoto oh, that's kids? um a Christian. Yeah, that's a Christian um group based in oh. Uganda. It's fire. Oh, okay. That's, they're Ugandan, but um I'm not really big on Ugandan music for some reason. Yeah, I'm surprised because Uganda I, I, um I think they have some they have a couple of good rappers and uh but the person who I'm trying to re- Think of his name, not Bobby Wine, the guy who ran against. Uh, Bobby Wine also has, you know, he has good music. Um, but um, the guy I'm thinking of, I think it's plat- platinum, uh, not platinum, uh, no, some diamonds. Oh, diamonds from. The, but he's Tanzanian, I think. Yeah. Tanzanian. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, he's good. Sorry. I said he, he's a good artist, but yeah. um, I find that Ugandan artist since I don't I don't even speak the language or anything, and most of them they. They sing in that language. And I, don't, I don't. I don't speak none of the East African languages, but yeah, I I, I, I grew up to me or Congolese. I don't speak any, but Congo has influenced my life like forever, and mm-hmm. <laughs> I have bun- yeah, That's like the largest collection of artists that I have Congolese. Oh, I have one artist that I know of. Oh, okay, tell me. Sergi Baka. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Sergi Baka. <laughs> okay, he's a singer now. I listen to his song. Okay, that's the only one I can resonate with. Okay, well, well when I promote this episode, I'm going to use Serge Ibaka. <laughs> ah, that's that's beautiful. Okay, so you guys are also content creators, and um, I have to give a shout out to your channel which is a beautiful YouTube channel and it, it deserves a lot more subscribers than that than, than it has. And um, anyone listening, please um, check out um, Jan and Malik's YouTube channel. It's a beautiful channel, just full of honesty and just raw freshness. And so how, how did you guys embrace your creativity and decide to put yourselves out there? Yeah, so we started the channel back when quarantine hit in March of 2020. So that first video that's on our channel, How We Met, we actually recorded it in my dorm room in university. Mm-hmm. And we recorded, we recorded in March. I just had it on my desktop. And I decided to post it in August for some reason. I didn't think anything of it. And I just decided to post it. But um, we just really wanted to create something where we could connect with other people who are like us. Because for me personally, I tried to search up... Um, blindian or interracial and i was only seeing like people i didn't see people that look like me so i'm like might as well just put myself out there if i don't see my my representation yeah so that's why we started and what we're seeing people that that could connect with us even not necessarily like black women um pakistani man maybe people that are also in like interfaith relationships they're 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 just curious right yes so um that's pretty much why we started. I already came from a, a creative background just because um, of what I'm studying in university. So um, uh, what is that? Really, yeah. So I'm in communications and journalism. Nice. I'm in my last year of university. So awesome. it's, it's kind of tough being online. So <laughs> hey. online students, but um, yeah, that's, I'm really just trying to use the platform to really just uh, develop my skills right now not necessarily to become a traditional couple channel because we're we're not into that. We're not into the challenges and pranks. Like we want to put, we want to put, obviously like it was a way to make memories for ourselves. And the mm-hmm. channel was created for the purpose of like the life of Janice and Malik. Right. And uh, we just wanted to showcase our life, like what's going on, like our memories and things. Also, all those videos are edited by, this queen so hey she, so she's the professional she's, at all and she's the professional different. you got a professional lot in the house and you know you're not gonna outsource it to someone else that, that i mean that would have been a query for you right there would have been like man go stand in the corner or something <laughs> <laughs> it, it kind of like it kind of like adds into like our interest like yeah. from a young age i didn't really want to be like an editor i'm more into cinematography like mm. movies like dark knight uh Different movies like uh, City of God. It just it interests. Very good movie. The filming, like how they did it, how they wrote it. More of the editing and production is like through her. She's into that stuff, and it kind of like came in in part. Like I would I would film the videos. I would try to do like some nice uh, s like 
view of footage and she would come in and she'd edit it. And then that's how we get these killer videos on our channel. Well, that's a beautiful combination of teamwork right there because each person recognizes their strength and you guys are applying it. And that's also another um, good way of making a relationship work because it's not about I'm the boss. You, you know, you, I'm my way or the highway kind of thing. And yeah. it's another thing people need to recognize too. So it's another reason why I enjoy your channel because it's just organic. It's organic. You, you know, it's not like I'm just throwing all these words at you guys, but it's some that when you, when I, when I watch some people's channels, I can see the ones that are just, yeah, they, they, they are pros, but they are doing this just for the views. But you yeah. guys have something that it's just coming fresh from you guys. And what the chemistry is there. I can tell that it's two people who are genuinely in love with each other, but there's also that good teamwork, you know, with, yeah. with you guys. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I, I love seeing something like that. So I can see how people are attracted to that and people are coming to it. And I hope more people find you guys and, you know, because you, you guys deserve it. You guys deserve it. And, you know, and actually I see, I see, um, I don't know if you guys have thought about it, but I see something like a documentary, like when you go to Pakistan and when you guys visit Uganda, you know, I, yeah, I see all that already coming up in your future. So yeah, that's excellent work from you guys. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you, you, uh, I, 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 know, I think on one of your videos, somebody had said something about being a sports fan, um, uh, the Raptors. So which, which one of you is the Raptors? Is it both of you? It's, it's mostly me. <laughs> the Raptors, yeah. I mean, she became a fan of her own, and she has like her jersey here somewhere. But like, uh, she, she 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 had like I got her like her own Raptors jersey. Like I had her last name on it, and then it represented number seven, which is Kyle Lowry, mm. who was basically like the point guard of the team. But yeah, uh, yeah, like our like our favorite moments were like in, like enjoying the Toronto Raptors is when they won their first champion ring. Mm -hmm. That was that was crazy. Like the whole city just came together. Six million people from outside of the city and everywhere else came all the way in downtown, packed up the streets. It was crazy. Like we were, we both went and yeah. we we were wow. so close to the stage. Like we could we saw it. You're we like the Air Force went over and we like had like red fumes coming up from the engines. I, I don't know how they do that, but um, uh, it, it was it was it was nice. It was it was cool to have that. Yeah, we're big fans of the Raptors. <laughs> and your and the president of the Raptors is uh is Nigerian born too. Yeah, Masai Ujiri. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Masai, uh, he came from the bottom and he started it. And he, I love the guy because like he's the one who got us Kawhi Leonard. He got us to get like he got us to get there to get that championship. You know. Yeah. And so there. So that's good. Yeah. Well, well I'll, I'll try and reach out to him one day and see if he wants to come on the podcast. And share his immigrant yeah. story. <laughs> if if yeah, he's a big shot, but hey, I, I can try. I've, I've tried some with some big shots and got in a few no's. But hey, if you don't try, you won't know, right? Exactly. <laughs> so hey, I can't thank you guys enough for coming on the podcast. Um, it's been fun having you guys. Um, to wrap it up, I got two questions. You know, to wrap it up. Um. What would you consider your favorite Canadian cuisine that you uh, you recommend to someone like myself when I make my first visit, my long overdue visit to Toronto? What is that cuisine that I need to have that is considered Canadian? What's that I should have? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say Toronto, but well, in terms of Canadian cuisine, the most popular one I would say is poutine, which originates from Quebec. Mm -hmm which is just cheese curds, fries, and gravy. Um, that's something that's big with the uh, Quebecois people, but um, we're not entirely into that. We're more into the I'm cultural into poutine. You, you are? Okay, but it, if you're going to get poutine, you have to go to Montreal, Quebec. Do not go to Toronto <laughs> yeah. or go to some other uh, town or something okay. because they didn't make it best. Like, go to the actual restaurants that say authentic poutine. We are the best in the city. Because you have to go there because poutine didn't come out of Quebec. But another one that I would recommend you is to go to Tim Hortons. That's our version oh, of Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that name's familiar. Yeah. 
There's a few in the States, but you got to go to the Canadian Tim Hortons and you have to get oh, a okay. vanilla medium with half coffee or just French vanilla with uh, a few milks in it. It's the best. It's the oh. best. Like, that's the best. All right. That, that sounds very Canadian. Okay. I, that, <laughs> I, I'll take you up on that because if it doesn't taste right, I'm going to call you guys and be like, hey. Okay. <laughs> oh, he recommended it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, you guys are awesome, man. You guys are great. So, final question. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, you ready, Malik? You sure? You ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm checking if you can handle it. All right, final question. Um, what would you like to leave the audience with? Could be a quote from your, um, a book you've read, from your favorite Afrobeat song. You know, now we got, I can incorporate that in there. Uh, um. Anything you like to leave the audience with, you know, just as your 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 final answer, just to your final question. So both of you can give the same answer or could give different answers. It's up to you. Um uh from for me, I would say the quote of the day or quote of life would be do what you want to do. Don't give a damn what others expect of you to do or want you to do. Especially like it comes with a relationship. People expected me to date a Pakistani woman. So when I tell them about her, they will eyes widen. So obviously just do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Don't have others control your life. That's mm. what I, I love that. Anything from you, Jen? Uh, I don't know. He pretty much just touched based on it. But yeah, I would just say just live your life because life is short and your parents will not be alive forever. So, you just, you got to live your life. Live your life, yeah. It's not your parents' life, it's yours. So, that's right. And that's All for right. people that are like us, of course, young people out here, just starting their, their life and their career. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So, um, where can people find you? Uh, people want to get in touch. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, add it to the show notes too, but um, just plug yourself in. Uh, where they can find us. So you is... could find us on YouTube at Life of Janice and Malik. So that's Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, and then Malik, M-A-L-I-K. And then my Instagram is at J-A-N-I-C-E, E-M-A. All right. So that's where you could find us, yes. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And I'll be adding both uh, links to the show notes and tagging them on um the social media when I release the episode so people can find you guys. So I can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate both of you. Thank you for joining us. And to everyone listening, don't forget to keep the love coming in. Subscribe, share with your friends, and hey, come back for the next episode. All right? Thank you for the privilege of your company. Thanks for listening to White Label American. If you enjoyed the show, we'll appreciate if you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast from. If you have any questions, comments, or have someone who will be a good guest on the show, or you want to be on the show, send us a message at whitelabelamerican at gmail.com. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at White Label American. Thank you for your support.